I know, sorry, it's been a while, I will explain. I was gonna take some time off at Christmas, but then I also decided to start packing and my room is a bit of a mess and I'm trying to move house. And I'll probably talk about it in another video, but I've literally, I can't be asked moving my mirror. And there's just so much shit over this side of my room. So it doesn't look like the normal setup but I've still got the audio and everything. And I'm just a bit tired, but I wanted to film something because this video is just a bit seasonal. I've tried, in my last few videos, I've tried to make them quite seasonal and tie in. So it kind of has to go up now without all this around me. And I haven't found anywhere yet, which is so frustrating. I've literally spent so much time packing getting rid of old clothes, getting rid of old books, trying to get rid of furniture, which I cannot get rid of for love nor money, like at charity shops, furniture collection places. I think in the end, I'm just gonna have to ask the council to take it away in the UK. And I've really been just decluttering and I haven't really had, a, like, I haven't really had time to do anything. I had two weeks off work and it was so nice to just have a break. I haven't really had a break in three years and I don't want that to be over dramatic at all but I've literally been working my full-time job anytime not doing my full-time job been doing YouTube and I never had a break I never had it like time where I could just sit and chill and it was so weird to just sit there on a Saturday and be like I don't have to do anything. It was such a nice feeling, but I knew this this would happen and it's inevitable when I got back to my proper job. Then it kicked in, I was like, yeah, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna go back to it. So that's why I feel like I have to do another video. And I'm just praying, praying that a flat turns up. Just praying so much. So today I thought I'd talk about how to date sober. So I see a lot of these videos around January which people put out like, I'm getting sober. And they're really annoying because you know that they're just a seasonal video that someone's done and you know by January they're gonna have fallen off the wagon and you know they're gonna go back to drinking alcohol and you know it's just a video like mine trying to catch viewers but I thought I'd generally have a decent insight on this because I never been on a date where I've had alcohol like I explained in my story time when I was younger I wouldn't really drink a lot anyway but I always felt the social pressure to drink especially going to university, trying to make friends. Especially in the UK, there's more of a drinking culture because obviously in the UK, the legal age to drink is 18. So it's not like America where it's 21. It's, it's not like that. In the UK, it's like you have to drink. And I can remember tr like drinking from maybe 16, like try just desperately trying to fit in. And I eventually got to the stage where I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't like drinking. I don't like the taste of alcohol. So pretty much from university onwards, I stopped drinking. And every date since has been sober. I think there's pros and cons to it. Even though for years I haven't had alcohol, there is still a part of me that still feels that I'm missing out slightly. I'm missing out on being part of the group, etc., And there is that sense that you're never really fitting in. But I've kind of accepted that now because obviously I'm older and my life doesn't revolve around going to pubs and drinking. Like I've talked about, I focus more on my business and setting goals. So it doesn't worry me as much now. But I think dating sober is generally, it's a worry for a lot of people. There can be a negative reaction to it from men. They can assume the worst. And I think there's different reactions to not drinking because there's two ways about it. You're either, you do not drink because you have an addiction to alcohol when you physically can't, or you're like me and you're generally not interested in alcohol. and it's a decision that you've made since a young age not to drink alcohol. I think my tips for 
dating sofa. The first thing I do is I always tell the person I'm going on a date with that I don't drink. I have experimented with doing it both ways, of not telling the man, of telling the man, and I find for me personally, it works better if I'm upfront and honest and I tell the person straight away, I don't drink. That way, it lets me get out the rehearsed speech that I have to do so many times because inevitably, when you say, oh, I don't drink, people will say, why? It just gives me a chance to explain my reasoning and for the person I'm dating not to have any going on in his head, any red flag indicators saying, oh, why she doesn't drink. It just gives me a chance to explain and I feel more comfortable that way when I go out on the date because I know that I don't have to hide. I don't have to hide, I don't have to pretend to drink alcohol for someone to like me and it gives the man naturally a chance to drop out of the date and as I get older I'm more about letting people that are not interested fall away naturally and not trying to chase them, just letting them go. And inevitably people do drop out and people have done in the past. And I think there's always going to be this connotation, especially in the UK, that if you don't drink, you're weird. And you'll never really get out of that because it's part of the culture. And sadly, that's what I found my whole life is this weirdness that I feel about not drinking. And it shouldn't be the case, but it's just how UK culture is. There isn't that, I don't really know much about American culture, but from what I can tell, it's more, it's more into like fitness based and goal, goal building. And in the UK, we're not really like that. It's about what you're doing at the weekend, who you're having sex with, are you going out, are you getting pissed, are you going out on the lash? That is what the UK culture is like. But I always tell them and I feel that it makes me more comfortable. And I think what is sad but true is when you tell someone you don't drink, for a lot of guys, they think, oh, she's not, she doesn't drink. It's not the not drinking that's the problem, it's the it's the notion that because she doesn't drink alcohol, I'm less likely to get sex with her. Because as we know, you're more likely to have sex when you're drunk or you've had alcohol. So for a lot of men, knowing that I don't drink, they know that it's gonna be harder for them to get sex from me because my inhibitions won't be lowered by having alcohol. And that's sadly what I found is that it does put a lot of people off. I think also when you don't drink, you kind of get trapped in in the coffee date and I absolutely hate the coffee date. Um, I see a lot of people saying, go on a coffee date, make it casual, make it quick. And I think it, it just turns people into almost just like a number. It's like, you're not a person, you're, you're not worthy of me taking up my time all you deserve is a coffee and I think people do it to make me feel more comfortable because I don't drink which I understand but I generally think you can't build any type of romance with a coffee date coffee dates to women they just feel cheap and nasty and stingy and women generally hate coffee dates and it also feels so awkward knowing what to wear for a coffee date because you have to dress casual and I don't necessarily feel sexy when I'm casually dressed and you're sitting, if you're doing this at the weekend, if it's a coffee date, you're just sitting with a load of, it sounds awful, but mums with prams and it's just people listening in on your date and I generally feel you can't build romance on a coffee date. It's not impossible but I generally think even if you don't drink, still go to a bar because there are still loads of cocktails, that you, like mocktails that you can drink. And for me, I personally still prefer to go to a pub or a bar for a first date. This is just me personally, but I'm not really into activity dates. 
I hate stingy activity dates like going for a walk because it's not as if I want to go to a five star restaurant and, and have a man spend, you know, hundreds of pounds on me for a date. But as I've got older and my self worth's improved, I generally deserve that. And I know people will troll me for this and being like, you just want a man for his money. It's not that at all. It's not that at all. It's about having the self-worth and the self-respect to know that I deserve to be taken out for dinner or drinks by a man. That is just a bare minimum that all women deserve. No matter what they look like, no matter how much they weigh, that is what all women deserve from a man to be treated with respect and any man that trolls this video saying that that's wrong please leave this channel because my channel is about women having self-worth and loving themselves and for a long time i didn't feel worthy of a man taking me out i would always offer to pay half but now I've got to the stage where I'm like, no, I deserve to be treated well by a man. And that's not saying that I will never pay at all or put my hand in my pocket and pay. But for those, that initial date or whatever, taking a woman to a nice bar and a restaurant is the nice thing to do. Dinner's not for everyone on the first date. Even I, sometimes, if I don't know the person that well, dinner with them can feel like this whole over anxiety experience and I am one of those people that needs to know the menu three days in advance and plan out exactly what I'm gonna eat what I'm gonna eat if that isn't in on the menu and I am one of those people but drinking shouldn't have to be a big deal or the fact that you don't drink it should be just a part of your life but it shouldn't impact on everything and I used to definitely when I was younger be embarrassed of it I'd have people that would constantly ask me why, people that I worked with, someone that I work with, they don't work at the company now, but every time we'd go out of group, they'd be like, why are you not drinking? Why are you not drinking? And it would just get to the point where I just have to hold my tongue so I wouldn't just be like, fuck off, I don't drink. But now I'm much more comfortable and it's only an issue if you make it an issue. If you go into dates with massive anxiety because you don't drink, then people would pick up on that. But as I get older now, I don't. And I still, even now, I'll go on dates. People will try and force me to drink. And it makes me feel really uncomfortable because a man wouldn't force a woman to have sex on a date. So why would they force them to have alcohol? And for me, it feels exactly the same. It's like you're putting into something into your body that you don't want. And I still get that reaction from some people is trying to force me to drink. Okay, so now should we go down some positives of not drinking? A, it's cheaper for you stingy men out there that don't want to pay. Generally, I think it is better to go on initial dates sober with a clear head and obviously you'll be less likely to rush into intimacy because your inhibitions haven't been lowered and it gives you a chance to get to know someone rationally and I think that can only be a good thing. Do you remember Patty Stanger on Millionaire Matchmaker saying two drink maximum? That used to almost make me laugh so much because even she knew that after two drinks the women would just act crazy. If they had too much alcohol they'd just be embarrassing themselves and Obviously not all women are like that, but I think in general it just, it gives you a clear head and it's made me like realise red flags quicker because I haven't been under the influence of alcohol because I can just sit there and think rationally, do I like this person or not? But sometimes I think, am I missing out? Am I missing out on the romance of sharing a bottle of wine with someone? Am I missing out on that bonding connection experience? But I think ultimately, if you're with a nice, caring person, they won't care because they'll like you for who you are. And I always think of the alternative when people turn me down for not drinking. I always think, would you prefer that 
I'm someone that gets drunk all the time and you have to like pick me up and like vomit all over your car or something, would you prefer that alternative? I'm pretty sure the alternative is not great. The only thing I will mention to wrap this up is I hate bowling, don't take me bowling. I just hate it so much. I hate wearing the shoes. I hate putting my fingers in those little holes with all the dirt in them and I don't even want to think of what is in the holes and I can't do it when I try and do it. I have to have the balls that are too small and they don't make an impact on the pins because I can't lift the big bowling balls and just in general I hate bowling. If you learn anything from this video, never take a woman bowling because bowling is just an horrendous experience for a woman in general say no to bowling. I hope that's helped slightly if you are sober or you're at the start of your sober journey. If I'm not posting as much, it's I'm fine. I'm literally just trying to sort my life out and I'm trying to move house and it's all a bit up in the air at the moment, but I'm not like leaving YouTube. It might, I don't know, it might drop down to once a month and I hate doing that, but at the moment I have to be realistic and the views aren't there to keep it going so it might just be a once a month post. We'll see how things go and if I'm still in a month's time like don't judge me because I tend to like put stuff on the internet say I'm gonna do it and then I don't do it and then I regret it so I'm trying to learn from that. I'm learning to try and only put stuff online if it's happening or I'm doing it. Have a nice week everyone, take care, see you soon.